In this video, I will show you a portable FreeBSD version, which is also my personal favorite, called Nomad BSD. It is a persistent life system for USB flash drives, and that's also the first sentence here. So Nomad BSD is meant to be used from a USB drive directly. You can use it as a live environment or as a full system, because Nomad BSD is a full pre-installed persistent FreeBSD version on a USB drive. That means that you can also update the system. Everything you do or change on the USB drive will be saved back to the drive. If you instead want to install the vanilla FreeBSD from scratch yourself, for instance with an XFCE desktop, I made a video about it and you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Before we start with Nomad BSD, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I am now here on the official Nomad BSD website and it says that Nomad BSD is based on FreeBSD. So what this basically means is that they took FreeBSD, they pre-installed stuff on top of it and they called it Nomad BSD. If this would be on Linux, then they would probably use a different repository and you would probably call it a distribution. Now here on FreeBSD it is very simple, Nomad BSD still is FreeBSD, it uses the same repository and the same packages. The requirements are very simple, you will need a USB drive with at least 5GB, then 1GB of RAM or at least 2GB if you're using the ZFS version. Let's take a look at the handbook. Handbooks are one of the best things on FreeBSD, so let's take a look. So USB 2 and USB 3 flash drives are supported, where USB 3 is faster and it's also recommended. Then you can download the images here. And you have two variants, you have the UFS version and the ZFS version. I will go with the ZFS version because it is faster. And then down here you can see the desktop. So this is how it looks like, it uses OpenBox and this is the OpenBox menu. For the icons up here we have DSB Batmon, the battery monitor, then DSB MC for the connected storage devices, DSB mixer for volume control, keyboard layout, network manager and date and time. Later we will see those in action. Then you have the pre-configured key bindings. For the startup programs you have DSB Auto Start. It is interesting how many of those utilities start with DSB, which is BSD Reverse. Then we have the Plank panel, we already saw it in the screenshot. We have the Display Manager settings, where we can change the default theme, default user or the default session. We can also add a user if you want. Then for the file systems, NTFS and X2, 3 and 4 are supported out of the box. If you want you can also install XFAT or BTRFS and XFS. Then for the software packages we have Octo PKG, which is a GUI for the PKG package manager. Then for multi-monitor setup a render is your friend, similar like on Linux. Also you can change your display settings. Of course you have sound and you can also use an alternative window manager. You can reset Nomad BSD if you're using the UFS version. And one very interesting feature, Nomad BSD uses an automatic graphics driver setup. It's enabled by default, but you can also disable it if you want. It's called initGFX. It is a script that automatically detects your graphics card and then loads the appropriate driver. You don't have this on the vanilla FreeBSD, this is Nomad BSD specific. The vanilla FreeBSD does not detect the graphics driver automatically, so you have to be specific and say load this driver on startup. But since Nomad BSD is meant to be used on a USB drive and you can use it on many different systems, it makes sense to detect and load the graphics driver automatically. So the init GFX is a lifesaver, especially if you don't know which driver you need to load. Now maybe there are scenarios where you want to disable it because it's not 100% perfect. Especially if you're using multiple graphics cards and then it has to guess which one you really want to use. So in that case you could probably disable it and configure everything by hand. Then another nice thing, it also contains a Nomad BSD installer, so if you want you can also install Nomad BSD on a hard drive. It is a nice thing to have. If you instead want to use Nomad BSD in a virtual box, then here are the commands how to create a virtual hard disk from the image. Then 
If you want, you can also enable Linux support so you can run Linux native applications on FreeBSD. And then we have the troubleshooting section. This is mostly related to the automatic graphics card detection or if you have specific problems with AMD or Nvidia, then you can maybe try those steps here and hopefully it will work. Now, without further ado, let's see how to install this one. First, we need to find the image. So let's scroll up and go to download. And now here, this is the latest version, Nomad BSD 14. And this one is using UFS. As said, I want to use ZFS. So if I scroll down, here is the ZFS version. So let's download the image. I will go with the main site and download. Now let's wait for the download. It has 2.2 gigabytes. Download complete. And here it is. Let's unpack it. 7-zip extract here. Perfect. We don't need this one anymore. So let's delete it. Now here we have the final image that we need to flash on a USB drive. So we need only one USB drive because this one is the final pre-installed image. The USB drive should be a more faster one, it should have a decent read-write speed, otherwise the whole system will be very slow and you will get really frustrated and it doesn't matter if you have the newest machine, if the USB drive with the operating system is the bottleneck. So get a decent USB drive. I'm using one with 128GB and you can find the referral link down in the description. So with that said, let's flash this one on a USB drive and therefore I will use a tool called Rufus. So this is Rufus. I almost always use this one. So let's download it. Scroll down. Here is the link. Download complete. Let's open it. And here it is. Now plug in the USB drive. I will do it as well. Rufus already recognized it. Let's select the image. Here it is. Open and start. Now it warns us that everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have something important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue. It warns me that my drive contains multiple partitions. I want to continue anyway. And now let's wait. Finished. Let's close it. The USB drive with this image is now ready, and now we need to boot into it. Make sure to disable secure boot and fast boot on your machine. Then plug in the USB drive or leave it plugged in as in my case. Restart the system and while the system is restarting you need to press one of the function keys. Usually it's F11 or F12, it depends on your PC manufacturer. Then you should get the boot menu and inside the menu select the USB drive and it should boot into it. If the USB drive is not detected then maybe you need to switch from UEFI to legacy boot inside your BIOS. I will restart my machine as well and I'll see you in Nomad BSD. And here we are inside Nomad BSD. The first time you run Nomad BSD, you get this setup window. So first we need to set it up. So let's select the language. English is okay. Next. And next again. Keyboard layout is okay. No additional layout. Now let's select the time zone. And next. Now set the password for the default Nomad user and the same password will also be used for the root user. So write the password. Next. If you want you can encrypt the file system but I will leave it as it is. Here you can choose the shell. If you want you can use bash but I will leave fish as the default. For the file editor easy editor is okay. And for the file manager I will use pcmanfm instead. Next. Now here you can see a quick summary and commit. And let's wait. Finished. And now it says that we need to reboot. So let's do it. And here it is, Nomad BSD running from a USB drive. So as said, this is open box. You have the menu on the right click with all the pre-installed apps and utilities. And then down here, you can see the plank panel. Also, as mentioned, up here you have the battery monitor. Right now I'm plugged in. Then you have a list of connected storage devices. Here it is. Since this is running on an actual hardware, I can also see all the connected partitions. And if I want, I can mount one. And it opened here. So this one is the PCMan FM file manager, the same one as you can find on Linux. This one is a port on FreeBSD. Now let's see the terminal. Here it is. Let's make it bigger, control plus. 
First, let's do sudo pkg update and the password. And now let's install pkg install neofetch. Yes. And yes again. And neofetch. On neofetch, we can see that this is FreeBSD version 14. Window manager is open box. And we are using about 2.5 gigabytes of RAM. If you are using ZFS as I am, then this is normal. Then for the web browser, we have Firefox. Let's try YouTube. In this video, I will show you how to install FreeBSD on a USB drive the easy way. Works as expected. It's interesting that also GIMP is pre-installed. So here is GIMP. Let's try it out. Works perfectly. All right. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. As I said, when it comes to FreeBSD, then Nomad is my personal favorite. I always use this one. I can easily try things out on different machines and I don't need to worry about loading the right graphics driver. On Nomad BSD, everything happens on startup automatically. Now, if you don't need a portable FreeBSD system and you also don't want to go through the hassle and install the vanilla FreeBSD, there is also another easy to install FreeBSD variant called GhostBSD that also has a GUI installer and I made a video about it. So if you're interested, you can find the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.